Hi, my name is Stephanie Tompkins, and I'm going to be talking today about for-profit hospitals and their ethical practices. Are they ethical? Let's start with our two basic types of hospitals. There is your nonprofit and then your for-profit hospital. Your nonprofit is funded by tax money, donations, and revenue. And then your for-profit hospital is basically all funded by reimbursement from their services. Um, and they can also receive donations, but it's mostly what they get for their service. So we have two different types of the same business. So what's the difference? The difference is where the profit is going. They both have to pay wages, maintenance, upkeep for their facilities, but the for-profit also has to pay taxes. They have to pay city, state, and federal government taxes. Nonprofits do not have to pay this. This allows for their capital to go back into their healthcare system. Then they're able to invest in things like new technology and research. And now the nonprofits do not have shareholders like the for-profit hospitals do. Those shareholders are taking those profits as their wages. Let's talk about insurance reimbursement. Private insurers give higher reimbursement for services. Medicare and Medicaid have significant lower reimbursement rates. Now for a for-profit hospital, Medicare and Medicaid, or people who don't even have health care coverage, they're not going to get the revenue that they need to then in turn give money back to their shareholders. So, for-profit hospitals can actually deny them service. Is this ethical? Who's to say? Or is it good business practice? Let's look at this slide. It doesn't show private insurers on this slide, but it does show Medicare payment rates and practice costs. The red line is the Medicare payment and the blue line is the practice cost. Just look at the difference between the two. There's a huge gap of what Medicare actually pays out and what it actually costs to treat patients. Now for a for-profit hospital, there's a huge loss of revenue by treating these patients. For business, business practice, they're going to want to send these patients to other facilities. So we already touched about taxes. For-profit hospitals have to pay taxes, city, state, and federal. Nonprofits do not, and they run on tax revenue. So when you have a non-emergent patient that is Medicare or Medicaid, or maybe does not have insurance, even with Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, they can actually send that patient away. With your more emergent patients coming in through the emergency room, they have to be stabilized, but then they can send them out. EMTALA, Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. It was actually started to stop what's called the patient dumping. Places were putting off patients to other facilities because of lack of payment, pretty much. Um, it usually happened more for people who had no insurance whatsoever, uh, but it still happened for Medicaid and Medicare patients who the hospitals knew that they weren't going to get the reimbursement that they really wanted. So here's another issue with for-profit, non-profit hospitals. For-profit hospitals need to offer services that will get them the highest reimbursement. Things like cardiac catheterizations and cardiac surgery, hysterectomies, 
almost any outpatient procedure has a higher reimbursement. Yeah. This is the issue, is that services like psych psychiatric services don't have a high reimbursement, and a lot of times these patients do are not privately insured. They're insured through Medicare, Medicaid, or Husky, or some side of government-funded insurance. It doesn't have the return that these four ho for-profit hospitals actually need. So nonprofit hospitals are able to offer usually more services than the for-profit hospitals. For-profit hospitals rely on reimbursement to make their decisions on how they provide care. They need to provide care for the demographic area in their community. Being a for-profit hospital is encouraging cost shifting where they raise the price for people where they know they're going to get the reimbursement. Not everybody is being charged the same. There's an ethical issue. The bottom line here is money is hindering health care. Health care should not be just reliant on the dollar. So what do we do with the for-profit and non-profit hospitals? Do we need both of them? Should the for-profit hospitals have to say, pay so much in taxes? Or do we just eliminate for-profit hospitals altogether? Maybe all hospitals are government funded. Maybe you go to some sort of socialization of health care. We do have options. We can make this better but we got to figure out what we should do. So after looking at all this information, for profits, are they unethical? So they're made to run more like a business than a nonprofit. They have tax money going out, they have to pay money to shareholders, and they have to keep their business afloat. They have to do, do these practices to maintain their business. So if you look at a nonprofit, they don't have to worry about a lot of these things that for profits do. Now there's laws and regulations to keep these for profits in their ethical spectrum, but I ask, would we need these laws in place if for profits didn't exist? Getting rid of a for profit could eliminate some of the questionable ethical practices that are going on in healthcare today. So Maybe a for-profit isn't necessarily unethical, but they may have some unethical practices that are being brought up. I want to thank you for listening to the information that I had to provide for you. Healthcare is an ever-changing field, and it will remain that way. We don't know what's going to happen. But I wanted to include some people that I work with on the left-hand side, Dr. Todd Blue, he is an interventional radiologist. And on the left-hand side is Dr. Brian Camby, a interventional cardiologist with technologist Linda Pendleton.